The Aeneid is the story of Aeneas, a hero from Troy, a great prince, warrior, leader of men, in a rich and powerful city that had resisted the siege of the Greeks led by Agamemnon and Achilles for ten long years. But by the ruse of the wooden horse, the Greeks finally break through Troy's defences. The city is destroyed, King Priam killed, and Aeneas is suddenly in exile, a refugee. He escapes the city with his father and son, but loses his wife Croesa along the way. With a small band of survivors, he sets off on a quest over the seas for a new home. Jupiter has plans for Aeneas. He will establish the city of Rome, the most powerful nation in the known world. But Jupiter's consort Juno has other plans, and she is determined to frustrate Aeneas's destiny. Repeatedly, the Trojans try to establish a new city for themselves, but Jupiter's plan and Juno's resistance drive them on toward Italy. But then, a storm at sea, raised by Juno, blows the Trojans off course to Carthage, a new city just founded by Queen Dido, like Aeneas, an exile from her homeland. Aeneas falls in love with Dido and helps her build her new city. Jupiter sends Mercury to remind Aeneas that Italy is his destination, and Aeneas sets off once again, despite Dido's passionate pleas for him to stay but not before ensuring that Dido's descendants in Carthage will be Rome's most remorseless enemies in the future. Aeneas finally reaches Italy, but at a cost. His father Anchises is now dead, and the Trojan women have been left behind in Sicily. Visited by his father in a dream, he consults the Sibyl of Cumae, a prophet who foretells great tribulations before Aeneas will establish his city. At Aeneas' request, the Sibyl leads him into the underworld, where the hero reassesses his past. There he meets Dido and dead comrades from Troy. Finally, he finds his father Anchises, who presents to him a parade of the souls of great Romans, who are preparing to take their places in the upper world. It ends on a melancholy note with Marcellus, the nephew of Augustus, who died as Virgil was writing his poem. We're told that Marcellus's mother Octavia, Augustus's sister, fainted after this passage was recited to her and her brother by Virgil. You will reach your destination, the Sibyl has told Aeneas at Cumae, but you will wish you hadn't. The Trojans' journey is over, but a new and greater challenge faces them. A peaceful agreement with King Latinus is scotched by Juno, who sends the terrifying fury Electo to rouse Turnus to war, the fiancé of Lavinia, daughter of Latinus, and provoke the local people to turn against their Trojan newcomers. Once more, the Trojan refugees find themselves at conflict over a city. The Trojans find allies in a community of Greeks settled on the future site of Rome, ruled by the old king Evander, and among Etruscans from the north who have revolted against their tyrannical king Mezentius. The young son of Evander, Pallas, joins Aeneas seeking support, while the Trojans in the camp they have established results the attacks of Turnus. Ascanius, Aeneas' son, has his first taste of battle, slaying Turnus' brother-in-law, Numinus. Aeneas returns to the fight, and the war moves inexorably to its conclusion. Pallas is killed by Turnus, and Aeneas is infuriated, slaying both Mezentius and his son, Lausus. Virgil refuses to present the war as a battle between good and evil, the tyrant Mezentius dies heroically, while Aeneas' behaviour after the death of Pallas is deeply disturbing for a Roman looking at the founder of their nation. One more major character is to die before Aeneas and Turnus finally come to blows. Camilla is an unexpected character in the poem, a heroic woman in a very male world. But when she is killed in strange circumstances by an insignificant character called Arons, the scene is set for the final duel. All Juno's efforts to put off the inevitable come to nothing, and the story ends in a dramatic, disturbing fashion as Aeneas brings down Turnus, and is minded to spare his opponent until he catches sight of a sword strap that Turnus had stripped from Pallas. Overwhelmed by the same fury as he had felt after Pallas's death, Aeneas slays Turnus as he begs for mercy. This story of heroes from the distant past is also a commentary on the world the poet Virgil was living in. 
The character of Aeneas sometimes suggests the Emperor Augustus, who had recently seized power. More often, though, Virgil expresses in the moral ambiguity of Aeneas's mission and his behaviour the anxieties of Romans as they emerged from twenty years of brutal civil war, hoping against hope that Augustus could finally bring peace. <laughs>